Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first round of the Risen Divine League playoffs. I'm Manny Sanchez. Alongside me is DJ. We're going to be taking th you through tonight's matchup here between Pawn Sacrifice White and Arctic Ops. Now, that's enough introductions. It's playoffs, and draft's going to be getting underway any second now. So let's get right into the action. DJ, take us through what's at stake here tonight. Yeah, I mean, what's at stake is moving on, right? There are no more mistakes available, Manny. Any series could be your last in Risen Divine League. So all of the improvements that you've taken from that regular season, you've got to apply them now. No more time for holding back. No more time for practicing. You have to bring your A game starting now or it is all over. And to that account, we already see some pretty strong bands coming through. Leona Xin Zhao going to be the first ones taken away. Definitely some solid uh, blind pick options taken off the table so far. Uh, but I guess before we get into the games, before we get into, you know, because one of these, only one of these teams is going to be staying in the upper bracket. The other one is going to drop to the lower bracket. Let's talk about, like, the seasons that these, these teams have had here, right? They both finished up towards the top of the groups, but not quite there, right? They both finished three and two. Um, I guess, could you run us through their, their seasons real quick? Yeah, it's been a little bit up and down for both of these teams, uh, particularly for the likes of PSW. I had the pleasure of talking with their coach and manager, and he said it, it had been a little bit of a, a, a kind of unexpected year for them, right? They, they were hoping to be a little mm -hmm. bit higher, uh, but after they played Striking Vipers, he said in particular, like, okay, we really need to work on some stuff if we want to have a chance at winning this league in the playoffs. So it certainly has been an adventure of learning for both of these squads, but for PSW in particular, there are a couple specific strategies that they mentioned coming into tonight that they think they have gotten a lot better at. A little bit less specific from the likes uh, of Arctic Ops, but I think there are a couple of important roles that they'll be looking at, particularly their jungle mid if they want to hold on, because that is going to be the strongest area coming through from PSW. Well, speaking of specific roles and counter strategies, they did ban that Amumu. Now, that's been seeing a lot of play and support recently. Uh, do you think Pond Sacrifice are like at least trying to sniff out some weird bot lane stuff? Because AO already picked up that Ziggs first. Do you think they're going to be running any sort of trickery down bot lane, or is that not what they like to do? Yeah, AO definitely going to be looking for a roaming support with the Ziggs coming in. The Amumu is, as you mentioned, is that sort of up-and-coming support. He's largely there for the amount of CC duration that he can get down with two bandage tosses and his ultimate now. Any setup just becomes really deadly. One of his favorite uh, lane partners is the Ash. Uh, with the Enchanted Crystal Arrow just sets up a massive CC combo that you can't get away from. I would expect something a little more roam heavy, like a Rakan later on in the draft, but it doesn't look like they're interested in supports at the moment. They're hovering an auction. They're going to lock it, Manny. There we go. I mean, talking about some uh, some interesting roaming potential and weird strategies, there's the auction. It's been, uh, you know, up and coming. Uh, everyone thought it was kind of useless on release, and then everyone's like, wow, this thing's crazy, and now it's kind of settled somewhere in the middle. So I'm excited to see it in competitive. This is the first time that I've actually seen this pick um, in competitive play, so I'm really excited. Yeah, I've only seen it once as well, and uh, it didn't really go well for the auction the last time I saw it, Manny. That game was over pretty quickly, so I'm hoping this is the first like sort of extended game I get to see it played. And I know it has been experimented with top. We'll see if that's a thing that actually happens, but I do get the feeling this will be a mid laner considering the pick order and the potential counter it has into rise in the early laning phase with that swing. Yeah, I would assume that he probably just wants to to get that in mid lane, and I think he thinks that he's not going to get punished too hard by the Rise pick, and hopefully not by the jungler as well, and that should give him, I guess, the options to, I guess, try to snowball up into the, the big, you know, the big scary, uh, I guess, carry that, that uh, Akshan, we know he can be, but often doesn't get to be, because, you know, it's uh, it's hard to get there with no CC, no setup, I mean, it's it's difficult. Yeah, it's very difficult. And the Rise certainly not going to be as punishing in lane. Rise can get a nice combo down whenever you do swing in, but it's a little less linear than something like the LeBlanc distortion, where you can just kind of, you know, EW, no problemo. You're just walking in a line for my full combo. So it's a little bit trickier for Rise, and he doesn't typically do well against ranged AD champions in lane. Uh, Talon could be an example, for example, if you're playing solo queue a little bit more so. But uh, certainly, I think, is the reason that this auction is selected and can also as mentioned already Rome maybe not quite as quickly as rise but if he starts the roam he can show up very fast with that invisibility and if he takes water walking with a little bit of that extra movement speed 
Yep, and that missed ban real quick um, for everybody on stream. That is Kane. Um, but yeah, it, it's going to be interesting to see that. I'm also excited to see Rel again. That champion came in once again, a, a bit like Akshan, where he was, you know, Rel was originally came in with a super low win rate. No one really understood how to play Rel. Then, you know, the pick kind of took over for a little while. Then it got nerfed. Recently, though, those nerfs got reverted. And I'm excited to see it come back out more in competitive play, especially into this comp of AO where they have these two really squishy, you know, um, backline carries in Ziggs and Akshan. Yeah, Rel going to give a lot of engage options to this squad against a, a team composition that currently kind of wants to hold you at arm's length. Uh, Akshan will swing in towards the end of a fight, but of course to proc his passive and to make use of his kit in a team fight, you really kind of want to be picking your spots on that champion. So uh, this would be an option for Pawn Sacrifice to really get in there, you know, flash W, close the distance. It is an interesting partner with an Ezreal. Uh, it can roam, maybe not quite as effectively as Nautilus. You just have to reattach that magnetism to someone else, but it kind of gives it away if you do it a little too early. So a little bit of finagling will need to be done by legit sack but i like the fact that they are already combining the rel engage with some secondary long range engage in the jarvan that's quickly matched by the hecarim coming in from arctic ops yeah and I, I like the the drafts honestly from both of these teams so far right pawn sacrifice white you know i i think i i might like aos a little bit more but pawn sacrifice white do have really strong engage options they have strong scaling options they're not going to die they got an ezreal on their team right so they're not going to die instantly the hecarim engage and the Mordekaiser is obviously always really good in the Shen. And then on the AO side, they've also got strong, you know, burst DPS damage in the back line. And then also, I think that that Shen Hecarim is kind of a, an underrated combo. Yeah, that Shen Hecarim is a really, I think, scary combination. We, we saw this, what, the Nocturne Shen, right, was sort of the, the plus one on this combination for like a long period of time. You just engage from infinite range. You got a second champion comes in over the top and this will be a, a similar concept to that and it really will disrupt anyone that wants to sit on the back line mostly this Ezreal um the interesting thing for PSW is this engaged combination is really meant for backline members but everyone on their team outside of Ezreal kind of wants to be up in your face even rise a little bit kind of needs middling range to get that sort of aoe artillery coming out firing and get maximum dps down so it is interesting that the extent of the range uh, of engage for ao is maybe a little bit longer than it needs to be but it will be very very useful for catching people out which is something they're going to need the later this game goes on because rise will go out in a side lane and looking at ao's composition there's not really anyone who can answer him in a side lane past two items, and it can create a big point of pressure for PSW. Yeah, so let's talk maybe a little bit then about this Hecarim pick, because it was something that was really strong, really prevalent earlier in this year, and then he kind of, you know, got sent, uh, for lack of a better word, back to the glue factory. He's kind of, he got, he was really bad for a really long time. And then I, I've seen some Hecarim lately, but it's like with a different build than before. Uh, I guess, do you know anything about it? Can you tell us about the, the this new Hecarim build that's coming up? Yeah, so the Hecarim has to build damage now. That was the big change and the big nerf from the spring split when he was just running uh, that Hextech chem tank uh, and just absolutely terrorizing the rift a lot of his damage comes from his passive movement speed so chem tank you could just build it then you were tanky you could heal with conquer you drain tank and you still do similar damage because you're just moving so darn fast with those nerfs and with some of the changes to the item you now need to build damage to be getting the same amount of uh, effectiveness out of the champion which does make you a lot more squishy does make you a little bit more of a glass cannon that's how riot went about kind of balancing that uh change they do of course mitigate some of that with the shen he will provide the shield whenever this hecarim does go in that will sort of mitigate some of maybe the less tanky uh he was compared to the spring but it is more of a niche pick than it used to be manny regardless of who is picking it up and what I'm, again, looking for this pick to do is engage into smaller skirmishes and try to pick off a member like an Ezreal. I think that the amount of range on the Hecarim engage is a little unnecessary for two champions that want, want to go into you, but you want to try to pick that backline member off or use that to collapse onto a side lane over a wall with the Shen. There's really not an answer to that when it does arrive in a small-sided situation. 
Yeah, for sure. I think a lot of what AO also wants to do then is also probably try to, you know, get some early leads, snowball following this Hecarim, and get him and the Akshan really big before Pawn Sacrifice really has a chance to scale up and do anything about it. Yeah, I think the Akshan lane will be very important. We already men uh, mentioned how important the jung uh, the mid jungle is for PSW. So you want to be able to match that or create your own tempo uh, and priority in those two roles. And Hecarim should take a little bit longer to come online than Bad's Jarvan, right? Jarvan's sort of that tried and true. You expect some sort of cheeky gank at level two, level three. Uh, he has the lockdown engage at level six, and that does provide some very nice setup for a mid jungle 2v2. I would give the edge over to PSW's 2v2. So if you can be clever with your pathing, or if you can hold off until an item spike when Hecram gets his Trinity Force and or Divine Sunder, and Akshan gets um, the Kraken Slayer, where you can really kind of uh, shred through this Jarvan, that's where I think you could start to turn the 2v2 around uh, outside of, again, some creative plays or pathing in the early game that takes PSW off guard. All right, well, I'm really excited to see how this that matchup and how the whole game plays out, but we're going to have to kick to a, um, a quick break real fast. On the other side, though, it's going to be game one between Pawn Sacrifice and Octop yeah, Arctic Ops. Sorry, stay with us. We'll be right back.
right, welcome back, everybody. Pond Sacrifice White versus Arctic Ops Game 1. I'm Manny, alongside me is DJ. We're going to be taking you through here, and it looks like already Arctic Ops are setting up for some interesting level 1 maneuvers here. Oh, yeah, they were pinging it real hard when they were coming out of base, Manny. They are looking for this creepy play through the brush. They have found out Ezreal. They're going to try and throw the hook. There's the flash! Yeah, there he goes, landing the hook on the legit sack, but I can't imagine it's going to do too much. He's going to be able to W away on Rel. You'd like to think he was going for that Ezreal, but just missed the anchor toss there on the flash, and that is uh, definitely not a fantastic start for Arctic Ops. Yeah, they were really hype about the start. It looked good, Manny, but unfortunately, the Rel is not the target you wanted to hit. Just easy as you like, starts that W, hops away, and will be remounted by the time the lane does start. So that is just a flash down for Shoes, and he does not have Hex Flash either. That's just going to be less mobility for this Nautilus throughout the laning phase. Yeah, and, and you feel like this has to take a lot of pressure off of the side of Pond Sacrifice White in this early game. You know, you'd think this was one of the few opportunities for Rel to kind of get pushed around by this Nautilus Ziggs lane. Uh, but now that becomes a lot harder without the flash on Nautilus. So definitely a swing for Pond Sacrifice right there. Yeah, it's going to be very favorable for them in the lane. The, the only good thing for Arctic Ops is you look at these this bottom lane in general, and most of what these teams want from this bottom lane is their supports to be elsewhere, uh, you know, supporting whether it's it's top lane plays, but most likely mid-jungle plays, and they want these AD carries to just be farming. There's not a whole lot of kill pressure, even with the flashes up, uh, even with the ignites outside of, you know, a level 2 cheeky play. Swarms. Yeah, now we're seeing some heavy trading here top lane. And oh, Swarm's looking for the flash answered by Vici. Now, this is uh this is a interesting matchup here Nocturne versus Shen, right? Talk to us about that. That's one that uh, that swings pretty hard at a at a certain point. Yeah, so Mordekaiser Shen is a very Mordekaiser favored. Uh, it is a bad lane for Shen. He does not like that lane and the reason being that your taunt, even if you land it onto the Mordekaiser just typically procs his passive at the end of a combo and so he just starts doing passive damage to you even inside of the radius of your shield just like this he's gonna get one more yeah. auto but he's gonna die yeah gank coming in on the top side this is definitely general vici's soul here evo just running in to make sure that nothing else is gonna happen as he just gets taken down for first blood yeah, just good lane positioning in that top lane, regardless of what the matchup is, right? You just bring an extra member, it's not really going to make a huge difference at the level 3 mark. Swarms lands the taunt, just walks on out, lets his jungler come in from behind with that extra movement speed from the E, and they pick up a very, very easy first blood. Nice start, and the TP already expended. Yeah, and you got to think this is really good for the side of AO. You know, they've, they've already got the kill down. Um, onto the Hecarim is actually here's Evo coming into conflict with Bad. He's just gonna ghost on him, but I think Bad honestly wins this at level four. They're gonna get really low. It's gonna be close, and that's gonna be Bad taking down Evo. Meanwhile, though, conveying flashes in looking for the kill. It's not gonna work out. He's going to drop two. That is a two for zero for the side of uh, Pawn Sacrifice at the end of the day. Yeah, beautiful stuff from Pawn Sacrifice. They've got a good roam timer, but they didn't even really need the support. It's just the strength of these pushing lanes. Again, even with the kill in the top lane, General Vici has a good matchup. So he shoves the lane in. He gets the first roam down into the river. And the same can be said for 504. And, or excuse me, uh, 504 actually coming in to clean up after conveying had already moved. It's just a 3v2 at the end of the day. And we already talked about the fact that Bad and this mid-jungle duo for PSW is just going to be stronger in the early levels of this game. That one tells in the top river, and it's going to be an accelerated lead, more than 1k now at four and a half minutes. Yep. Now, I got some good news and some bad news. Uh, first of all, good news for AO here. General Vici forced to run away again. Bad news for me personally. I believe I am uh, encountering this spectator bug that you guys were talking about. I've never seen this before. Um, but it makes play-by-play -play a little bit interesting. So uh, stick with me on that, guys. Although it looks like it may have fixed itself slightly as I was saying it. So maybe I just had to shame the spectator client. Which one? Which one you got? You got the ghosts. You got the, the ghosts, ghosts going on. Yeah. Oh, you got the full ghosts. Okay. I've I've got the one where every time they die, they just stand still and don't go yeah. anywhere. I've uh, I've got that one too. 
spectator client very interesting legit sack though jumping in looking for conveying and that's going to be another kill for pawn sacrifice and uh yeah i wonder if you guys have seen this on stream or not looks like you aren't but he's just kind of standing still <laughs> i love it he's like standing in this like proud posture he's got no hp he's dead he's just like i will stand here in defiance manny i will not die i will pretend like i'm not dead even though he just got ganked once again and give some props to legit sack he has been so active on the map already roaming to that top river play and then once again in mid lane now he's down here for what's potentially a dive yeah i'm not certain that they're gonna go for this they are flat there are summoner spells up on the side of ao but he is looking to wrap around we'll see what we, what the what goes down here um in the bot lane is they've really got to get this lane in but ziggs he's not really letting them do it yeah bad is gonna clear it out uh evo z is gonna walk in just in time to see this krugs are taken conveyings here can they get a hook no yeah. they cannot bad <laughs> is able to just walk on out and uh that's the second time a hook's gone wide there for shoes that could have impacted the game uh but you know another interesting fun fact about the spectator bug we're experiencing we don't get to see death timers on the side of the thing either so i'm just kind of going in completely dark in team fights so uh if i don't say whether a fight was a uh, a two for zero or a one for one it's because i probably can't tell <laughs> well, wait we, we could try we'll, we'll try and fill in the information as it comes along with whatever spectator parts of parts of the spectator bug we don't have manny <laughs> we'll see if we can work with that one <laughs> It is a, it is a, it's a, it's a, it's a bit sad. It's a bit sad. It's two weeks now of a, of the riot bugs. Maybe Vex made everyone scared. Maybe, maybe the fears are just too much. Oh, I have a new one. I can't see items either. I don't know if you can. Oh but yeah, I can't you're see right. Items. I can't. <laughs> I can't. All right. Either. Well, we're flying high on a couple levels. Wait, wait, wait. You can, wait. Uh, you can see them on the Twitch stream though. Okay, you can see them on the Twitch stream. Uh oh, swarms. All right, here's the gank coming in. Not much else is gonna happen. Shen is just going to taunt away, and uh, I guess uh, this this matchup you'd think starting to swing back towards the Mordekaiser a little bit. Yeah, it, it should still be very much in Mordekaiser's favor. Any point of parity between these two champions will favor Mordekaiser in isolation. Conveying is in a lot of trouble. Yeah, he's walked up too far, but the Stand United might just bail him out. He's able to kite back here as in comes Hecarim on the flank. Evo's going to get one kill onto legit on this rel and they're going to be forced to back off and ao strike back in the jungle nicely done this is exactly what we talked about in draft man you're right multiple members walk in your hecarim is nearing level six and it doesn't matter how far he engages right you just pop the shen on top and it's an odd man situation bad wanted to fight that he had cataclysm he's going to kill shoes Oh yeah, there he goes, jumping in on the shoes. This is going to be free. Nautilus elects not to burn flash, which is definitely a good call there. Yeah, definitely a good call, particularly for just the support, right? You, you'll you kind of take that as, I'm just trying to set up a dive. It's day is scary to dive in Mordekaiser. Conveyance is going in. Yeah, he's going in bad, though, looking for him. They're not. He's not going to be able to burst down the Jarvan, and that's going to be his death. A little bit uh, of an interesting play there from Conveying. Definitely... You know, maybe not certain on on the the limits there. Yeah, I I think not for for the kids at home out there on the stream. One thing to remember is uh, your E is everything for you as an auction. That is your engage. That is also your only escape. So if you use that tool and you don't kill the member and you're not close to killing the member, you are going to die. So just be very prepared for that when you do decide to charge on in there uh, with your heroic swing. Yeah, and that's going to be a dragon given over to Pond Sacrifice White. So just when you think AO's getting back into the game, Pond Sacrifice White gets this early dragon. And this is a huge Jarvan right now. Yeah, the Jarvan is really, really scary, Manny. And I'm very nervous. I can't see it exactly right now, but I believe that the amount of gold he has in his pocket means we are going to have a Gore Drinker online very, very shortly. Maybe one more full clear will do it. And when you get accelerated that hard on a champion like Jarvan, right? Even like, like Lee Sin gets a Gore Drinker that early, you're basically just unkillable in any fight. Yeah, conveying coming in with a little trade there onto the auction. It's not really going to do too much here. It's 
we uh, swap back up the top lane, and yeah, like we expected now, this Mordekaiser are pushing the Shen around. And, you know, now that they both got ultimate, this becomes very difficult for the Shen. But they're saying, hey, we're just going to go directly to the Mordekaiser. Evo's coming in for another gank, but he's stuck in the Death Realm for now. We'll see if he can last until he comes out. Now it's a 2v1, and that should be another kill there for Evo on this Hecarim. He's 2 and one Meanwhile, though, in the mid lane, Conveying flashes in and picks up the kill. So that's going to be a cross map 2 for 0 for the side of AO. Yeah, really nice stuff from AO, and this is really the fight fact that we were looking for, Manny. They get the nice play in the top lane. I went a little closer than the earlier ones, of course, but they managed to make it work. That mid lane play, though, a solo kill onto 5 EO should not happen there with the jungler in the top side. Their comms not quite there as bad was roaming towards that mid lane conveying. Finds himself a nice window. Might go back in onto bad again. Yes, things are looking bad for this Jarvan. Stand Unite comes in, but he's forced to run away, though. There's a double TP on this ward. What are they going to do here? 5 EO forced to run away. He doesn't have backup right away, though. In comes the True Shot Barrage. That's going to be one kill over to Pond Sacrifice. They're going to try to chase down the Hecarim as well, but I don't think they're going to get him. It's looking like just a 1 for 0 side of Pond Sacrifice. Yeah, and for the first time this game, Manny, uh, they... Whoa. Okay. Shoes? Maybe it's not done yet. Shoes goes in, but he doesn't have any backup here. And I believe this should just fizzle, although actually, nope, bad is not done just yet. In comes the Rel, forcing the flash, but he is pulled back into tower range. Legit is looking like he's going to go down, and he does die. I'm Meanwhile, though, there's a teleport coming in. Conveying gets one back, oh. and he makes an excellent flash out to escape. But Evo's going in. He's a one-man army, but not quite strong enough. Gets yanked back in by the Mordekaiser. This is a crazy fight. And it is going the way of Pond Sacrifice, I believe, at the end of the day. Although it's hard oh, to tell who's dead and who isn't. Yeah, yo, bad. That was really sick, dude. Hold on, we got more. More scrapping. It's all over the place. Oh, my God. We're not done yet. Excellent flash pull there from the Mordekaiser. That's going to have another kill. These teams are going to town on each other. Bad. Once again, in the middle of the action, he still has not died. But he misses the flag and drag and gets shut down on the backside of the play. Yep, didn't quite have Gore Drinker. That will give over a nice shutdown. Just 300 gold. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it is a, an influx nonetheless for Arctic Ops. But man, oh man, Manny, what an extended fight we just had between these two teams. I mean, TPs, Realm Warps, the Shen, Stand United, all for the first fight. Then we've got just extra sort of skirmishing around the tier two turret. I think six or seven people die in the full like minute and a half that we were skirmishing. These two teams are out for blood at the start of playoffs. We are already at 12 or excuse me. We are already at, uh, I believe it's five and eight right now. So 13 kills in 12 and a half minutes. Yeah, I mean, they, they are out for blood and not much else. They were not scrapping over a dragon or a tower or a scuttle crab or really much of anything. That was a fight over raptors. Oh man, Raptor, Raptor's so valuable. I mean, Everybody I know just... they're enticing, but it was it was a lot committed. Got got a lot of got a lot of chicken fans here, huh? Maybe maybe maybe, uh, maybe the teams ordered some McDonald's before dinner uh, for dinner or something, and it's just on their mind. Well, yeah, there's another TP coming into this bot lane quadrant. Bad is looking for another steal. Can he pull off another miraculous escape without flash? Signs point to no, as he does get pretty close. Flash committed from the Shen though means he's not walking away. Very quickly, Bad does pick up two deaths in this game. That one, a little too aggressive, trying to take away the red buff. Didn't have as much support as I as he believed he did. It was bottom lane being shoved in. Now here comes the Shen. Yeah, Stan United out. This is going to be a 2v2 here in the mid lane. 5 does survive for a little bit here. Conveying, oh. it's going low, but he does get the kill. Now, can he kite out the rel? Signs point to yes, and that's going to be probably two kills coming in here. Two for zero. On the side of Pond Sacrifice. Meanwhile, though, the fights do not stop. Shoes is 1v1 against this Ezreal in the mid lane. The Ziggs Bomb comes in for good measure, and an excellent stopwatch is going to keep him alive, but not for long. Knee is going to get him back. We He just left. Bad flag and drives back into the fight again. Finishes it off. And another crazy melee means a uh, two for two overall, I believe.
Yeah, it is an absolute fracas at the moment. Conveying makes another very nice play in the mid lane with the support of his Stan United. That, that Stan United has just confounded PSW to this point in the game. It has cost them a turret in the top lane, but that's maybe the first one. Uh, AO still got the first tower of the game with that Ziggs and uh, that Ziggs just kind of shoving in knee throughout the entire laning phase, easily taking down that turret with the bonus damage and. Just like we said, these supports have been nowhere near the bottom of the lane. They have been a part of every single one of these skirmishes, Manny. And in the isolation, it was that turret for AO and now the top side for PSW. Yeah, and, you know, this this game is on a knife's edge right now. I'm really excited to see, uh, I guess, what happens with this. A, whether one of these teams is going to go for the last Rift Herald or if they're just going to wait and fight at this third dragon. It's going to be really interesting because if AO want to turn it around, I feel like it's got to be by Dragon 3. Yeah, I think that is a big question. If you are PSW, you do not need to commit maximum resources for this second Rift Herald. Yes, it can do some damage to the turrets, but obviously the first Rift Herald is just a lot more valuable because turret platings are still up and available. There are none for this Rift Herald, and that isn't necessarily an obvious place to dump it. Me? Yep, a little 1v1 between the Akshan and the Ezreal coming here. I know how this one turns out, though. That's going to be a quick shutdown for conveying in the bot lane, and... Uh, I'm not really sure what that's going to open up besides just a, I guess, a numbers advantage on the top side. But I feel like these teams, based off how this has gone on, they might still fight. And here they go. Looking for the engage here. Bad does not get um, able to flag and drag out. His flash is not back up yet. And he's going to go down. So that's uh, unfortunately matched on the side, on the other side of the map there for AO. So upon sacrifice, they uh, lose two. And they lose the Rift Herald. Yeah, this has been some uh, very greedy positioning coming in from PSW. First, it's knee in the bottom lane, even with the Trinity Force available. You're not going to beat a, a five-kill Akshan with a Wits End in a 1v1. He finds himself too high up the lane. Then it's once again bad, poking his head too far into the river. They both get punished. That will give over the Rift Herald. And this one's going to be very valuable because they didn't have the numbers to defend that critical mid lane turret will be the one to fall and now the shallow parts of psw's jungle are largely going to be contested for the rest of the game by ao yeah and that's so big specifically for this third dragon fight that's going to be coming up here in a couple minutes i mean like it, it just opens up so much more room for them to work with yeah, that Drake, it's going to, it, what they're really going to want to do is walk in and set a line of vision, right? We already talked about the the uh, Shen Hecram combination. We've seen Swarms be incredibly effective with his stand united so far. So you can get a couple deep wards like the one we already see sitting just outside of the blue buff and force the likes of PSW to walk through that vision. That's where you can set up that onslaught of shadows, followed up by the Stand United, and suddenly the team fight will be split. The enemy will be panicked, and that is when you can make your move. Yep. Speaking of moves, General Vici, though, looking for conveying. He's a little bit tougher to 1v1 than the Ezreal, and he's locked in the Death Realm right now. But if he can kite this out, he does have a chance of winning this fight. It's going to be pretty close, but I believe General Vici is going to be hard to beat. Conveying's around, but here comes the Stand United, and they're actually going to turn this around. I've spoken too soon. He's forced to flash out. Will he drop the Akshan ultimate? Signs point to no. Although, there is a collapse happening here. Oh, baby, 3v2. Yeah, in comes the Rel. Going to get the uh, the ult down onto Conveying. That's going to be a shutdown. Unfortunately, it does go over to the Rel here, so they are going to be able to pick one up in return. And once again, this game... Every time something happens, the other team just responds instantly. Yep, it is fighting back and forth. It is over-aggression back and forth this time. It is conveying getting punished for walking too far forward, for believing he could get that solo kill onto General Vici with a little bit of help from Swarms. They don't pull it off, and now they're the ones that should lose control around this Dragon Pit. Look at where PSW are. All right, Bad is inside the enemy jungle, taking away camps. He's going to leave a ward behind, I would I would hope. I would hope someone would leave a ward, but they have not left a ward behind. That's a little disappointing. That uh, could be your TP flank, but alas, uh, you do have some shallow wards around that bottom river that will need to be cleared out by Arctic Ops in the next 50 seconds before this Drake comes up because you do not want to give up Soul Point uh, as it can just become a magnet that drags you around the map with the threat of that soul for every drag that spawns after it. Yeah, and AO doing a good job here getting the vision, that line of vision you talked about down. 
We're gonna see though. Do you think it's uh, it's better for Pawn Sacrifice to just contest the dragon directly or try to start a fight before? Uh, if you're Pawn Sacrifice, I, I would want to see a full group five v five. Walk behind your Jarvan and your Mordekaiser into uh, a bit of a funnel. Let your Ezreal sit back. That way, if Evo goes well into the backline, you can just counter engage onto their backline with the cage. That will stop them from accessing you really easily uh, and gives you some protection. They're going right now, though. Yeah, Evo gets rooted up by Rise. Just kind of runs away real quick. We're definitely going to see a 5v5 here. There's probably no other option at this point, but neither team really wants to take a stand and be the ones to start this dragon. They're both dancing around the pit. Keep your eyes on Legit Sack. He's the one that will likely press the button at some point when he sees the right grouping. They've got all the engage tools on their side. It's really just Evo on the other side that could press the R button to go, but Swarm's Lull is right in their face. They'll see the Stand United coming. This is kind of hilarious. The dance is still going. Conveying is lurking on the side of the fight as well. That's good to know. He's coming around the backside. Maybe they're posturing for something. All right, there's the Death Realm popped. Looks like they're going to start it. He flashes in and goes the other way. Just trying to escape this Mordekaiser right now. But in comes Shoes. He's starting the fight. Legit responds on the other side. But it looks like early on, Pawn Sacrifice does have the edge here. They do collect one kill on the other side. Bad and Legit are dropping low. They're stuck in the Cataclysm. And they're forced to leave. 504 and is running. Uh, he's uh, all alone on his, on his lonesome. They're dropping low. General Vici as well on the side is uh, also falling. It's hard to tell who's dead and who's alive right now. I'm seeing ghosts. Call me Sam Darnold. Oh, man. So that is, uh, in the end of the day, I believe a one team fight for Pawn Sacrifice. There's just so many dead bodies standing in place on my screen. It's hard well, to tell. Right we'll now. see what happens to Bad here. If he can stay alive, I think it's a one fight for them. If he dies, it certainly is not. He will get the kill. Only the Ziggs remains, and he has Gore Drinker. Oh, bad. He's going to... It's very close, but he's going to drop to the Ziggs at the end of the day. So that looks like this dragon at the end of the day should go over to the side of AO here. Wait, they're TPing to contest. We got more oh, coming, Manny. Oh, man. It's not over yet. Rise looking for Kuro oh, on the Ziggs. The true shot barrage does its part. I can't imagine Kuro's <laughs> going to be able to escape this. This game is not over yet. Conveying coming in, and he answers back. Revives Ziggs as well at the same time. Ziggs and he hops TP. right out. That's big. Ziggs has TP. He's coming right back into the fight. Ziggs There's the bomb, him. and it kills him. Evo Tempest, though, now alting over, looking for legit, and AO responds superbly to that after it looked like they lost the fight. What is happening, Manny? There is so much fighting. There's so many random 1v1s and wild plays, but it all works out for AO as the auction passive swings the fight. Kuroyami just TPs instantly. He provides the finishing blow to Need. That stops the contest. That nets them a drake, and they're going to hop on over to the Baron. This is risky. Bad is up. You are going to flip this. Jarvan should have access to the pit unless he doesn't have smite. Uh, I'm not sure. He does. It looks like he's got smite, but he might not know that this is happening. They might have assumed they reset because nobody even moved there on the side of Pawn Sacrifice. It's that or they were just really, really you know, certain that they'd lost the Baron. Yeah, that is, that's a surprising decision. I'd have to go back and take a look at the vision or, or see if smite was down I'm, I'm it looks like our summoners work on the on the spectator bug so i do think he had smite maybe just a, a clever move coming in from ao catching them unawares and this is going to be devastating for psw as we mentioned earlier they have this rise split push that will be stronger and stronger the later the game goes mm -hmm. but that kind of only works for you if you have lanes that are long enough to create a split push you haven't even gotten this bottom lane turret down and you can guarantee that at least two of these waves are going to be shoved all the way up towards nearly your base if not all three if this is played well by arctic ops as they spread out on the map yeah i feel like they mustn't have known about it considering both these teams have contested literally everything this entire game but bad is coming in looking for more but rel does actually not make it over the uh, i believe make it over the wall with that swarms is going to drop though at the end of the day but conveying is coming in and here comes a huge hecarim flank from everybody people are getting revived here legit is going to survive as well or sorry he's going to drop as well the shen ult coming in stand united will he survive ezreal is all alone and he is going to drop down that is i believe 
a ace or a four for zero for i think it's a four for zero for the side of or four for one for the side of ao i don't have death timers on my screen chat i'm sorry meanwhile in the top lane though general vici and shoes going at it one for one this is a bit of a mismatch here the ziggs is alive but i don't know if they have the dps the 2v1 this mordekaiser i say that though when the bomb lands and Got him. They should have him. Yep. Of damage there he goes there. they're gonna knock him down that's the yep. delayed ace the delayed ace does come through and ao finally gets the smackdown that they wanted as they just dominate that bottom lane skirmish i i like the proactiveness from psw right the baron's there you believe you can get a pick really early maybe swarms isn't quite paying attention thinks he can shove this lane for free you get the pick but he bought so much time a three-man taunt as well right as he went down and evo g who is on two items absolutely runs them over with the onslaught of shadows to set up the rest of the fight beautiful stuff from ao and they are now in full control of this game yeah you didn't always think it was gonna go this way too pawn sacrifice had a pretty dominant start to this game but now they've dropped you know the, the threat of soul point is gone and the other teams got bare and that one team fight really broke it open for the side of ao yeah, that what that that two and a half minute three teleport team fight, man. I, mean, I, I guess I guess drink. calling it one team fight might not be <laughs> you know perfectly uh, serious there because they were fighting for a very long time. But at yep. the end of the I guess the I don't know the the extended trade I guess uh, they 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 come up with the dragon and it has all sort of fallen into place for them since then. They've been. You know, just barely coming out alive in some of these fights, but doesn't matter as long as you're the ones making it out and the enemy team's dropping. Yes, the execution from AO, once they got the lead, has been excellent, Manny. And a lot of it has just been punishing uh, the aggression coming out from PSW. There's nothing wrong with being aggressive and trying to find an early pick on a Baron push, but you do have to set some vision. You do have to be aware of where members are on the map. And largely, uh, this big lead has been earned from quick punishes off of the reads from Evo and Swarms making the plays. It's been great stuff with the Baron. They now have a five or six K gold lead as I pawn on over to uh, to the Twitch to the, the Twitch feed here to actually see the gold. Since my gold is reading 102,000 to 90.9 thousand, which is uh, I think obviously not accurate. Gold is getting doubled, I believe. That's my my theory. This is a one of the strangest spectator bugs I've seen in my entire life. But this is uh, we're gonna be this is gonna be interesting to see here. What isn't getting doubled on our screen is the dragons here. We're going to see if Pawn Sacrifice decide to contest this. It looks like they will, but AO does not look like they have much intention of letting them into the pit. Yeah, Pawn Sacrifice kind of has to go for this. It's one of their last win conditions in this game is to get that soul, but look at the zone control. They're not going to get anywhere near this, and they're likely going to lose the fight afterwards. Yeah, absolutely. Big flash engage. In comes the Hecarim as well. Legit fights back, but nobody is there to follow up. Ezreal forced to run away. He's dropping low, but he is untouched. He's able to free fire right now, forced to E out onto the other side. Meanwhile, though, Death Realm, General Vici's just using it to disengage. They're just trying to stop the bleeding and try to get trying to get out alive here. It's not gonna do much though. Bad goes in and things go for bad to worse for that team. And uh oh, Koke okay, from the conveying runs into the team, trades back as well um sorry a bit hard to call these fights when people are just kind of standing dead bodies um but i believe that means ao do come out on top they also get the dragon too so now it's two to two in dragons yeah beautiful setup from aoe once again they just completely zone out psw from getting to that drake mentioning you know those drakes are, are pretty critical to psw at this point because with how far they are behind soul is really their only win condition but now they have to wait another 10 minutes for that to be an option for them and that still means they have to take a third drake before that that's getting trickier and trickier as time goes on you have this rise that's pretty much it for the late game. Meanwhile, every play you make is just being punished by Arcticops who continue to team fight well, who continue to punish mistakes in decisive manner and continue to grasp more and more control over Summoner's Rift. Just one or two more fights like that, Manny, and they will probably be busting open the base and ending the game. 
I mean, we saw it in that fight at the choke point trying to get into River. Like, how do you get past this, like, Ziggs minefield and everything in, in choke points? It's just so hard. Like, if, if, if AO are on the right side, I mean, how, how like, if they're positioning right, like, how does Pawn Sacrifice ever get in? Yeah, I, I, I don't really know how. But the hook gonna land. Here comes the Shenel. Yeah, this looks like we're going to get another fight here. Shenault comes in pretty early, oh. but they are going to be able to drop bad there. General Vici going down as well. He goes into the death realm, so he'll prolong his death for a little bit here. Maybe he can trade back shoes, but, I mean, that's just the best case scenario at this point. Swarm's looking for the taunt. It's flashed away from. Evo looking to run in as well. Thinks better of it. This Ezreal has a lot of damage, but Akshot is stealth on the other side, and they're going to pick up a kill. That's going to be another one. I believe that is going to be four kills coming in for the side of AO, and I mean, this this has got to be uh, the, the beginning of the end for the side of Pond Sacrifice. Yeah, this is absolute demolition by AO, and they are just busting this base over. There's so much damage to structures on the Ziggs. They might just be able to end, Manny. Yeah, we'll see if they do. I can't quite see death timers right now, but I believe that they've got enough time. It's just the rise here. Jarvan has also respawned. Some other respawns are going to be coming in soon, but they're going for the play. Ooh. Bad trying to extend it, though. He is going to get two kills here. Hero play from the Jarvan. Shoes is going to drop as well. That's a triple kill for the Jarvan. And Bad puts the entire team on his back. He might just get a quadra kill here. And Pod Sacrifice Wait, live to the fight Penta. another day. Get him up there! Oh, he's too far away. The Hecker is surely going to run away. There's no way he gets out unless they deliver this for him on a silver platter. But excellent, excellent base defense there. And they're going to start up this Baron. They're going to say that's more important than the Pentakill. Although Hecker still alive. There's no way. I think he's just got to execute. execute. There's no way he goes for the Nexus, right? He pulls three people with him. Yeah, he's just looking for the execute. All right. So that is suddenly the game flips. Yeah, it flips completely once again. They thought they had it, Manny, but the timers are too quick and the cataclysm was too big coming from bad. He got three members in there, absolutely oh, murked them Jim down for a quadra kill. And now, okay, can they, can you get it? Can you get it? He's oh, going to get it. Yeah. yeah One traded back, but I mean, that's still about the best you could hope for in that situation for pawn sacrifice. Yes, it is a huge window back into the game. Four kills onto your jungler and the barrier, and you can now push out your waves. And we were talking about the rise earlier, not really having any opportunity to split push. Well, if you can get a lane all the way to the enemy base, take some of these structures down that are still standing two to eight right now is the turret count. Now you actually have that option in your back pocket if you can get one lane of pressure. So this is an opportunity for PSW, they are still down to the dumps in terms of gold, about 5k behind at the moment. But this is an option for them in the game, and, and, and in a game in which they really had none before that. Yeah, and I feel like without Mordecai, so there's no way they can test this, right? Yeah, no way. You just let this go. Yeah, they get the Baron. That's more important. Maybe they'll get mid tower, but I doubt the AO is going to give that to them. How much work do you think they can actually get done with this Baron? It's a, it's a tough question. If you group up to Siege, it's a little bit risky considering how far down you still are in gold, right? You're looking at three item spikes versus some of your members still on two. I'd actually really like to see one member out in a side lane. There's just so much standing gold, Manny. If you can extend a little bit to one of those tier two turrets, force them off this mid lane turret, then you could potentially bust it down. But if you just group as five, Ziggs is going to hold you off forever. Yep, that's going to be very difficult for them to do. But if they can, like you said, if they can win one more of these crazy team fights, they've got an avenue back into this game. There is a lot of gold left up on, um, on this map right now. So much gold still standing. And it does represent a bit of a problem because your, your big question is being answered right now, Manny. They're not getting a lot out of this Baron push. They're actually being forced back such is the lack of control they had before that quadra kill for the jarvan that's right it's a lot different than it is now there's actually a tp coming to force him even further back yeah ao they are not gun shy about this they don't care that they got wiped on the nexus then they're saying hey we we were just trying to end like we we could still win this fight we are still confident in our ability to 5v5 but uh the wave coming in here 
We'll see if they end it. I mean, there, there's got to be a 5v5 to end this game. They cannot just walk in and kill it. They will certainly meet resistance, Manny. You can see they're just slowly backing off at the moment. Look at the timers. There's three minutes on Baron. There's three minutes on Drake. So really, no reason to be anywhere else. The only thing you could potentially worry about is a flank ward. There is one deep in mid lane, but hook a land. Yeah. Ezreal forced to flash out, though. There's a big Hecarim ult on the side. In comes the Jarvan. The Ezreal still barely alive. Conveying goes in. That's a double kill for Bad. He's going to get more again. The Bad revives. is doing his best. The Akshan revives come in, though. And you got to think that that's the end of this game. That's going to be everybody dropping on the side of Pawn Sacrifice. And AO are going to take game one in this series. AO so strong once they got a hold of this game, Manny. There was nearly no doubt. It was a bit scary at the very, very end when they gave up the quadra kill too bad, but with no Nexus turrets to defend themselves, PSW were consigned to their own base. They could never get their split push online or their rise to a strong enough point in this game. Uh, and they just fall under the weight of Arctic Ops in this first game of the playoffs. Yeah, and it, it's just so hard for them to play that game out once it got past a certain point. The Ziggs and the Akshan and like the, the engage that they had from from the uh, the Hecarim Shen, it was just like too much for Pons Sacrifice to overcome, even after their strong early game. I felt like Bad had a fantastic game on this Jarvan. He wound up going twelve and eight. Um, you know, it's just the the unfortunate fact, like, hey, he's not playing Viego, he's playing Jarvan. Yeah, absolutely, right? He, he made a lot of good early game plays. The mid-jungle at the beginning, particularly that top river, really set them in a good direction. But as you mentioned, right, Jarvan is not a late-game carry. He can certainly land big ultimates. He can certainly do some damage. He can stay alive for a long time, but he does not have that reset potential. He doesn't really have that carry potential. And with all the gold concentrated on bad, with so much map pressure against you, just PSW could just never find the right angle to come back in the game, even after getting a quadra kill on their own base. Yep. Well, we'll see if Pond Sacrifice are going to be able to come back in this series after a quick break. We'll be right back.
Hello, everybody. Welcome back. We just saw AO take a crazy game one over Pawn Sacrifice White, and we're getting in the draft. DJ, what do you think Pawn Sacrifice has got to do if they are going to even up this series? Yeah, I'm taking a look at the bands to actually kind of see what their strategy is at the moment, Manny. So far, the bands are exactly the same, despite the fact that the sides have swapped. So, uh, Pawn Sacrifice now on the blue side. Do keep in mind that Pawn Sacrifice was the higher seed, so they actually did choose the red side in game one and now are flipping over. They do make that one change, they take the Hecarim away from Evo G Tempest. So, that's the first move. Outside of that, uh, well, wow, they are moving fast as the set comes in. What I would want to see from them is a little bit better execution on the lead that they built, right? I, I don't think their comp was necessarily the problem in game one, Manny. I think they just couldn't find a way to expand on the early game advantage they got from that one fight in the river. So I would like to see something like this set and a little more priority. Do what you did in the early game, but this time find a way to group up and try to take a tower, try to create some pressure because it felt like that never happened in game one. Oh, no. Are we this gonna will, see no way. Seraphine? There's no way. This this would be... They're, they're trolling us. They're I'm trolling waiting us. for them to lock this in. Sona, or Seraphine Soraka. Wow. Okay. So As their first two picks. Is this going to be bot lane? Is this going to be a solo lane Soraka? A solo lane Seraph? Like, I, I don't know where these two champions really fit into the meta right now, or if this is just an AO special. Do you have any form of insight on this 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 strange first rotation, I guess, from them? Nope. Mm -hmm. uh, these two could really go anywhere. Soraka probably is no longer a top laner. Okay, hold on. Love this Blitz crank pick. When you see stuff like this, when they want to cheese your yeah. lane, when they want to throw healers in there, pick blitzcrank it absolutely ruins squishy supports that do not want any part of this champion love the quick response from legit sack because now it doesn't matter right if if, if soraka ends up in the bottom lane as a support as an ad carry if seraphine's a mid lane, it doesn't matter someone can get pulled and they are not gonna like it yeah, I really like this. It's super good from Legit Sack, especially after they just dropped that last game to have the confidence to just slam the Blitzcrank down. To be fair, there aren't many more, like, matchups where you're like, yes, I really 100% am certain I want to pick Blitzcrank than if the enemy team R goes R1, R2, Sona Seraphine. But still, the fact that they said, they, they saw it, they responded, we're like, yes, let's do this. Uh, that has to be commended. Um, speaking of... Uh, the things that were banned last game though that yep. did make it through this cane does make it through for ao as well they've got they are going to be uh you know if you're if you're upon sacrifice you're gonna be one one to pick up some heal reduction this game for sure yes you definitely are and then have fun because remember that soraka ultimate wish now uh negates uh grievous wounds so big thumbs up for that one manny as the bands are coming through Akshan is taken away by psw misfortune and anivia are the bands away from AO and Aatrox, the final ban. Here's our R4. Will this actually give us any information as to these bottom layers? I don't think it will. I think they're going to pick top lane here, Manny, and leave the counter pick for conveying. Yeah, I mean, there, there's no reason not to when, when PSW shows set and Lilia. Like, maybe there's a world they do a weird flex with Lilia top, but it's probably set at this stage. And, yeah, Orn is definitely not showing much. Although, uh, okay, would... thank you, Mundo. Okay. okay. Mundo would a lot of healing. This. We've discussed this. <laughs> well, okay, wait. With the change to Mundo's ult, though, right? Now it just gives you flat HP, and it doesn't heal you as much. So I don't know how effective Grievous Wounds is against Mundo's ult anymore. Yeah. Which but... is a, it's a, a little... Tro it's, it feels a little wrong, but uh, a little, a little trolly, but... Nevertheless, they'll still have to buy Grievous Wounds. I think they might just be a little disappointed at certain specific moments in the game when our buttons are pressed. The Vel causes the response. A poke mage against two healers and a Mundo? Oh, if they pick Zed, that's interesting. I was about to make a joke about how AO's, like, plan coming into this game was just to pick purple healers, but it doesn't look like they've uh, they've done that. They're going to opt for the God. Kiana, the really aggressive assassin. So, you know, Pond Sacrifice, they're like, hey, we, you know, we see your, your double enchanter bot lane. We're going to raise you Blitzcrank. You know, 
on sac um ao are like hey pawn sacrifice we see your velkaz we're gonna raise you kiana and uh that's another champion that's very strong right now in solo queue Oh yeah, this is a, this is a very solo queue draft from Arctic Ops. Let's make no mistakes about that. This Seraphine Soraka can farm the lane from a thousand range. They never have to interact with you. They never want to interact with you, which is why Blitzcrank is so good into them. It forces that interaction if you do hit a hook. But what AO is playing for here is very simple. Get Evo G through that early game that we all know where Kane is about a half a champion. You should have a, you, you probably don't have priority in top lane with Mundo, but the threat of Kiana all in past level two really on Develkaz in the early game is enough to make it difficult for you to make plays around mid lane, particularly when you have non-guaranteed CC coming from Velkaz. And once they get that came through the early game, this is solo queue bust them up at its finest. This is Rome God Kiana goes everywhere else, one shots the carries in the bottom lane with Kane zip zooming around. This is this is the solo queue magic that everybody just hates to see when you're playing against it, Manny. Now I know this is a mean question because this is uh these are two very unique comps, but do you have one that you favor coming into this game? Oh that is an interesting one. I like some of the things that PSW have done for themselves. I think the set will get priority, which will be very nice with Lilia in the jungle. But ultimately for me, after game one, I feel like getting conveying on this Kiana is a scary, scary thing. And the fact that Kane was banned in game one and is picked and is just such a, I mean, you've, you've heard all of it, right? Elo boost, yada, 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 this and that. It's just like, an incredible champion in the right hands in the right situations. I am very scared for PSW in this game, Manny. I don't necessarily know if I like the AO comp, but I think it will win this game unless we see legit sack go nuts and hook in this bot lane a bunch of times to create a very, very strong late game win condition with this jinx. Yeah, we'll, well, we are going to see who comes out on top, right? AO, we'll see if they, you know, take a clean 2-0 with a very unique composition or Pond Sacrifice White are going to be able to punish that, come back, tie up the series, and head to Game 3. But we'll be back with Game 2 right after a quick break. Stay with us.
say I have a grim sense of humor. All right, hello everyone. Welcome back. We got Pond Sacrifice and Arctic Ops right here. Arctic Ops take game one. They're now running back a really weird composition, and both teams kind of uh, walking into each other's jungles here. We've got another interesting level one on our hands. Oh, yeah, this one even more spicy than game number one, Manny, as it's the full five person engage into the opposite sides of the jungle where everyone just leaves unsatisfied and disappointed. A classic. Yeah, I mean, we'll see if one of these teams, if they both back off or if one of them decides to stick around, because that could be dangerous if someone face checks. We got pings. Oh, Wait, they're staying. We go back. Okay, AO are here for the long con. They say if someone walks into the bush, we are destroying your mental once and for all. Oh. Oh no! Oh, no. Hey. Oh, okay, that's that's probably a dead jinx there. That's gonna be first blood going over to AO, and this is not the start you want if you are pawn sacrifice. Oh no, and the kill went to conveying of all people, Manny. This is absolutely devastating. Yes, 
Bad is going to get a camp to start the game. He moved up to the top side, but they fell for the trap. And what was already a very solo queue composition designed to tilt your mental and designed to just, you know, go absolutely berserk for AO now has an early trigger with that kill onto the Kiana who will be roaming out of mid lane just as soon as she possibly can. Yeah, now I made a bit of an observation here as we were loading in this game. We have a Predator Blitzcrank on our hands. Talk us through the uh, the potential rationale behind that. Yeah, so the uh, Predator is a little bit interesting. I think it is just going to be about positioning and the ability to rotate. We actually talked a little bit in the break about the fact that this Vel'Koz in the mid lane will need some cover against Kiana as the levels do go on. There's just really no way for him to counter that champion. He has a very unreliable knockup that is so easily dodged by the quick dash that comes out of Kiana's kit. So both for the roaming and for the positioning in the bottom lane to catch these enchanters unaware is likely the pickup for uh, this Blitzcrank. There's the hook. Oh yeah, hook coming in. That's exactly what you want for Pond Sacrifice. That should be a kill. Oh, okay. Wait, is he going to make it out? No way. Okay. It's going to be a one for one here, but still, that is the type of playmaking you want. But bad on the other side here. He's going to get collapsed on. This 2v2 is not looking good. Flash is traded though, so it's going to be A-OK. -okay. Oh, wait. Okay, conveying just flashes and it gets a kill. Uh, you probably just want to run straight back there, bad, huh? Yeah. Oh, man. The bot lane play was good. The hook was great, right? Even pre-Predator without the boots, he lands the hook just like we wanted from legit sack. But Lee, or but Nee, excuse me, I think, again, really wants a kill after the start of this game. He flashes in, ends up dying, and then in the mid lane, another kill goes into Conveying's pocket. Just more EXP and gold for this Kiana. That is not the start that you wanted for PSW. Yep, and you were right about one thing, though. Legit Sack has, um, he has rotated up early to this mid lane. I don't think he's going to be able to accomplish too much unless Conveying gets really greedy, and they're both just going to have to reset here. As and Actually, we are seeing a gank here topside. Swarms may or may not be able to walk out of this one, and yeah, he will. Bad, not terribly scary on this Lilia at four minutes in. Yep, only level three, no way to CC the Mundo, and really not that much damage. You definitely needed a General Vici to be close enough uh, to get that E onto Swarms, but uh, alas, was not. They did get a flash, though, so if this lane does stay like it is, pushing in, being held a little bit by Vici, uh, and he can maintain a, a good wave state, you could look for a return gank, but Mundo, never the easiest person to take down. Yeah. 504 and running a collision course here with this cane. He is going to 1v1 him, but there's not too much he can do besides steal away that tiny raptor. Uh, I've also been told that you guys are getting the spectator bug on stream now. Uh, so now you guys can, uh, I guess, see what we had to deal with last game. Fortunately, I'm not getting it this time. Uh, but definitely not an ideal situation. Hopefully this gets fixed soon. Not by us, by Riot. <laughs> Yep, definitely buy right. But uh, in that case, uh, I think we might need to throw it to an intermission so we can reset the actual stream, Manny. Yeah. Are we doing that produ production? Is that a yes? Okay, we're throwing to a break. We will be right back uh, after a quick pause to uh, solve some technical difficulties.
All right, welcome back, everybody. Sorry for the delay, but we should have that weird little spectator bug fixed on our end now. Um, but yeah, coming back into this game here. We've had to skip ahead a couple minutes, unfortunately. There's been a kill mid lane, but that is about it. Yeah, conveying finally died, and that is a nice uh, uh, influx of gold into Fivio's account, and also probably a nice little mental reset as well. Again, this matchup pretty tough for the Velkos. He has to really land those skill shots, and gets worse as time goes on. So he'll be very happy to have that kill in his back pocket with a little bit of assistance, but still uh, in the favor at the moment of AO. They get the first Drake as well, Manion. They can be very happy with how the early game has gone. Their Kane will uh, be very be through the early game fairly soon, I would say. Probably another seven minutes or so on that 15-minute mark. We could look for that transformation, but he has been unbothered in his clear. Yeah, and 5VO did pick up that kill on another Blitzcrank roam to the mid lane. Although, I would like you to explain something to me here, though. Because if he's going for this like hyper-roaming playstyle, he's got the Predator... How come he opted for Swifties and not Moby Boots? This is a good question. Uh, I'm actually, I am I would have gone Mobies. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually not quite sure what the answer is. He's going to land the hook, though. Yeah, we got him shut up. There's a fight going down. Here comes the Kane looking for legit sack. It seems that this is going to backfire a bit on the Blitzcrank, and he's going to get a kill there. And that is a, another kill here coming from AO, although there's a big sleep coming in here. Big flash here for Bad. Is he going to be able to finish off anybody? Yes, he gets one. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Mundo and Set going at it. Set's got the grit stacked up. He's got the health, but it's not enough to get through Mundo. Bad, meanwhile, now he's forced to backpedal. His conveying is coming in off the side. They're going to, looks like they're going to disengage, and that is going to be a pretty even fight, all things considered. Yep, one for one at the end of the day as both junglers do roam down. A very nice play for Bad, who had tick six, gets that full three-man sleep into the pop with the uh, crash down on the W. Beautiful stuff from the jungler to fix what was looking like another broken play as PSW continue to keep themselves in. Hook? Okay, no. Nope. I mean, that's one where you're just kind of guessing is the Blitzcrank. Like, maybe that could have gotten placed a little bit better, but oh, oh. conveying. He's looking for a kill. Legit sack, though, going to disengage that, and a nice two-man queue from Velkaz dissuades any possibility of a kill coming down for him as teams just kind of angrily stare each other down in mid lane, and then the junglers move back towards topside. Let's see if there's going to be a kerfuffle over the scuttle as there's a bit of a your top side both of them survive but we are getting a jungle 1v1 between bad and evo i feel like evo does win these right now yep uh evo probably tricky to take down without your ultimate for bad which is still on cooldown he's now in trouble from conveying i think he might be dead yeah okay he barely gets caught Fox. on the very edge of that stud in there and uh yeah i'd be missing pinging too if oh, i was no! and general vici he is going to be stuck at a 1v3, and he's going to be killed. Although, actually, 5 well, does come in off the side. There's a big Jinx rocket that lands. There's also the Lifeform Disintegration Ray coming in from Velkaz. It's not going to do too much. Evo is stuck out here. Let's see if he can survive long enough to get his evac and walk through this wall. Doesn't need to. He just queues through it and walks out. At the end of the day, another solid play there for AO, even if it is a little bit, little bit scary in the middle. Yep, they did have the numbers advantage, Manny, but remember, this is an untransformed cane, so you only have the half-man advantage, and with the ultis up, Fivio and, uh, with a little bit of help from Ni, nee, are able to sort of turn that one around, Vici coming down as well, but again, it is AO coming away with the kill. Uh, it ended up looking a little messy on the back end, but they don't really lose anything for it. Evo just goes on back to farming. There's already a Prowler's Claw completed for conveying and they continue to get what they want in the early portions of this game a slight lead and a slight lead onto the members that matter for them to blow this open in the mid game yeah looking very solid for them so far we got another blitzcrank roam coming in here mid lane though looking for conveying there's the flash in there's the ultimate and he is going to probably drop to ignite yes he will 5eo picks up another kill meanwhile though bad is getting bullied by this mundo as he is, uh, Mundo definitely does not fear the deer right there. 
Nope, no fear whatsoever. And no fear on legit sack. This predator build just going so well. And now I think I understand what the, uh, the uh, I had some time to think on it. I think I understand what the Swifties are for. It's for Seraphine and Soraka, right? It's for this. When you're going to get slowed, when you're going to get uh, slowed up by the E, by the Qs, you just will be able to stay a little bit more in range with those Swifty boots, reducing the slowing effects and keep you uh, at the uh, range you need to hit that Q, which again is everything that you want. But the Predator working out beautifully against the Kiana, who can just cannot get enough distance between her and the Blitzcrank. He ends up flashing in to guarantee the, the knockup and the pull on the Q. Beautiful stuff from Legit Sack is keeping his mid laner alive. Yep. Although his mid laner might not be alive for too much longer. The ult does miss. Meanwhile, though, in the bot lane, there's kills. Top lane, there's fighting. Directed camera cannot make up its mind. Legit sack being chased down in the bot lane. Let's see if they dive this. The Kane probably going to get this kill here. And uh, in the mid lane as well, it looks like Fivio is able to turn the kill around on conveying and get a kill. That's big for the Velkaz. 2-0 now. Yep, they exhausted a ton of work, kept him alive against the ultimate, and then Bad showed up to clean up the kill. Nicely done there as Chaos erupted all over the map. Skirmish in top lane, kill in mid lane, kills in bottom lane. But again, AO will come out slightly the better. Their Kane has been able to st uh, head back to base. He is transforming now into his Rost form, so it will be the red Kane. Coming out, the only thing they will lose is the tempo for the Drake because of how unhealthy Evo was. So they will get evened out on, but with their Kane now through his early game on a mythic item in the Gore Drinker, they are looking really scared. There are three completed on four on the side of AO to zero on the side of PSW. They just cannot fight at all until some of these item completions come through. And it's going to be really, really rough for them unless they can make it through this early game. It looks like, though, things are a lot better for them than they were at this point last game, honestly. Yeah, they're actually a little bit up in gold, right? With all these kills, I, I think a couple small shutdowns have gone over. So they are in a decent spot and they do have some scaling on their team composition. A nice engage from bad can turn into a cleanup from the jinx was largely your... Okay, they're going to get him again. Are they going to get him yep. again? Conveying! <laughs> yeah, but he's just going to drop. That is uh, not much to be wrote there. Blitzcrank just kind of runs in and uh, does his thing evaporates that Kiana. So three and four here on this Kiana as opposed to 2-0 on the Velkaz. This is definitely best case scenario here, I think, or at least nearly best case scenario if you're the side of Pawn Sacrifice. Yep, it is a best case scenario. That slight gold lead will grow. Legit sack, another great play. We said he needed to be in mid lane like four or five times. Well, he has been, Manny, and it's been making a difference. Do want to give a thank you to Crazy in the chat for reminding us that uh, the uh, Swifty Boots also stop the self-slow on his W after he accelerates, Manny. So that is another reason that he has uh, elected to buy up on those boots. I mean, I'm not... I'm not really sold on that mattering very much like you're really trying to get to like the the priority targets and i, I really don't think the self slow matters as much as like the front end move speed to actually connect on that hook like it's definitely nice i personally i'd rather have move uh mobies though but maybe i'm wrong maybe it's very significant and he's going to be running for longer yeah, I mean, I think you could look at it either way. I will say, uh, so far, I think Legit Sack has at least proven his decision making to be correct for this particular game and his own play style, man. Because he has gutsy. been, he has been everywhere, and he has been keeping this mid lane even. Kill, he's on conveying again. Yep, he has been everywhere. Although it looks like he's going back to the spawn platform here, conveying able to flash out, but I don't think he's going to live for very long. Bad is very big once again. This time, though. Lily's got a bit more burst than Jarvan. He's flashing in, looking for the sleep. Looks like he's probably going to pick up another kill, but the heals from Shoes might just do enough work. He's going to survive and then drop later on. Swarms, though, meanwhile, flashing in on this Mundo. He's going where he pleases. His passive still hasn't been knocked off. He's going to be a force. That's going to be the shutdown. The Cleaver lands on his knee. The Jinx is forced to run away, but Lilia is here for backup, and they are going to be able to drop Mundo at the end of the day, and that is going to be a decisive win there for Pawn Sacrifice.
Yep, nicely done by Pawn Sacrifice. And once again, it starts with Legit Sack just making Conveying's life really hard. Yes, they take him down, but it costs them a lot of ultis. Time. Skirmish in the top lane. Evo's getting kind of worked right now. Oh, man. General Vici winning. I don't know if he's going to be able to sustain enough. Only enough to be able to survive. Actually, though, he Gore does drinker. do his cane thing. Slow. Pops the Gore Drinker. Runs back in and heals up half his HP he bar. Soon. He's going to be okay at the end of the day. But... Yeah, that was a uh, impressively played there by General Vici at the start of that fight. So close to just taking him out before he could heal. We all know that that Kane leech, that Kane healing, it's really disgusting. As you see, conveying he's uh, popping ah. that camp sign, and I mean, I can't blame him. He has been, but for good reason. And legit sack has largely made his life very uncomfortable in this game. It's a 30 CS lead for Fivio on this Velkaz. He has a completed item. He has uh, the Seeker's Arm Guard now to reduce some of the damage working towards the Zanya. So he's in a really comfortable spot. And a lot of that, again, has been from Legit Sack. You look up one member, Bad has... Oh, wait. Yeah, Bad has seven kills. Like, oh. this has gone very well as... Uh, okay, run, Shoes run. Shoes just kind of dodged everything right there, by the way. Yep. Conveying, Conveying though, didn't. cannot walk into this team for the life of him. He's getting He's dead. destroyed He's by dead. this Velkaz before he gets oh. anywhere, though. Oh, a big supreme display of talent, and that is the combo that they needed on the side of AO. And they're going to pick up three quick kills right there. You thought Keanu was dead. All he needed was the ultimate. <laughs> Oh man, he, he baited me on the he baited me out here, let alone the PS PSW. I mean they're sitting there like this guy jumped from always zero HP, let's kill him. Wish comes down, keeps him alive through the autos, hits the three-man supreme display of talent, and it is just an absolute meat grinder of a wombo combo conveying gonna be walking away with a smile on his face after that one they'll pick up the second drake and they will swing this game right back into their favor yeah i believe this is the first time in a while that the gold has actually gone to them in this game and it's a little bit like we saw last game pawn sacrifice gets a little bit ahead early game and then they uh unfortunately ao is able to fight back we'll see though if pawn sacrifice can actually stem the bleeding in this game yeah, it's going to be interesting when the fights do eventually arise. So far, we've had kind of 3v3, 4v4 skirmishes at maximum. Um, sometimes 4v5, depending on who comes. Uh, okay, hold on, Swarms. You should be fine against the hook, right? Yeah, yeah something tells me Mundo Passive going to help him out a bit there. <laughs> um but yeah, I mean, we have, right, Baron spawning in eight. We got a dragon in four minutes. And, and we really have yet to see Evo group with his team for a fight. So I'm a little concerned about what a full 5v5 would look like. What I'm looking at for the side of PSW to continue is to get that second item on the Jinx. Then I think you really can start shredding through some of these tankier members like the Mundo, uh, like Evo, when he will be in the midst of your team. Oh. Are they? What? This is bold. They're also uh, on a ward. Uh, I'm not really sure if I'm a fan of this decision from Pawn Sacrifice. I mean, they, there's no way that they can get this cleanly, right? Oh, shoes. They do have a lot of poke. This Velkos is big. Legit Sack looking for the disengage. The Kane's oh, over the no, sky, but he gets put right out. Huge Seraphine ultimate, though, comes over the top. The Kane is still topped off as well. He's going to get a kill, but he's going to get instantly bursted down. Meanwhile, in the back line, General Vici, he drops as well. That makes it a two for one. And they are going to disengage for the time being. They stop the Baron and get an extra kill here from AO. Very strong here, although... They are going to be able to down. chase down at least one yeah, kill, it looks like. Fivio is going to drop two, so that's a three for one. Oh, make that four. Convey is going to drop, though. There's a reset for the Jinx, but I really don't think he's going to try to look for much more here. Very split, scattered fight there, but at the end of the day, that's a three for two for the side of AO. Just another one. These two teams, man, he just back and forth. Bold call after bold call. Skirmish after skirmish. 20 minute Baron they went for with a one and a half item jinx. Yes, bad is huge. He has the Leandries, but that was bold. I'm honestly, okay, okay, Kuro. Nice. Okay, oh. fancy feet. Should be fine. Um, I'm honestly shocked that that fight went as well as it did for PSW after they got hit with a five man Seraphine ulti. That was 
honestly the encore of your dreams and somehow they were able to come out just one kill to the bad on the side of PSW. That was damage control if I have ever seen it. Yeah, not only was it a 20-minute Baron, it was a 20-minute Baron on award. They were very bold about that. Uh, it didn't quite work out, but it also was not a complete disaster. Baron's still up on the map. They only were one kill down on that fight. So, like, it goes to show, I guess, how strong PSW is at this point in the game. Yeah, PSW can fight back mostly through bad and General Vici at this point. One item on General Vici is fine. He's not very tanky, but he can dish damage out, as we saw in the front line, and bad just does so much. But they're still working on that second item for the Jinx. Almost everyone on the side of uh, AO has second item. Now they're ganking top lane. Yep, General Vici probably going to die here. I cannot see him making out of this alive. And yeah, he will. he's going to drop. So will this first tier two, this tier one tower. But Bad here looking for a fight. I'm not really sure why. There's nobody from his team on this side of the map. And he's going to drop immediately That's there. That's got to be Baron. It's absolutely Baron. It's right in front of the purple worm. The jungler just died. Yes, conveying's low, but it doesn't matter. He can just walk on out. They can play this slow. They have heals and shields for days. This should be a Baron. I don't know if they can contest it. And even if they do, the turn just feels so easy without a front line. Yeah, it's not the fastest Baron in the world, but the jungler and top laner are dead. General Vici does have teleport. There is a hook coming in, but I just cannot see this working out here for the side of Pawn Sacrifice. Legit Sack is getting run down, and in goes the Kane. Evo's going to pick up one kill. He lands the knockup onto the Jinx. That's going to be two, and that is almost certainly going to be Baron. Jungler is coming back up. Bad is now alive. I think they can't go back to it. So they've done their job in stopping the Baron, but they do lose the two kills. Evo, he's not done. He's going to whiff. Yep. It's got to be soul point for them, though, now. They should be able to just run a dragon. Yep. Is coming up in 12 seconds. This is a much easier objective to take at the moment with Bad on the map. They should be able to aggress this. And keep your eyes on Conveying. Look where he is on the map. There is two. There's a control ward and another one in the entrance. Okay, they're going to flip this. They're going to head over to Baron. They might start this up on the side of PSW as this Drake is taken down. But this Drake's already gone. And there's a ward on the Baron. This play gets snuffed out. And they will just lose that Drake for free. Yeah, I like the call for PSW if they they had people in position to just commit for that Baron and trade it for Soul Point. But yeah, like they were not able to get there in time. They had the vision as well on AO side, and there really wasn't much else they were able to do. They're gonna lose that dragon, and I guess we'll see what they go for next. I mean, they gotta set their sights on Baron at this point, right? Yeah, Baron's the big prize for both teams at this moment. We will see some vision battles in this top river. Legit Sack going to try to prey on these little pockets, see if he can get a squishy member. Uh, maybe not the cane. I don't, I don't think you really want to pull the cane. Uh, but try to find one of those enchanters. If you can take them out before the fight starts, that is absolutely massive. But that is the only prize for both of these teams. It's so critical to their siege. And comps that really don't have any. Here comes the hook attempt. All goes wide. But yeah, the Encore goes also goes wide. There is a Kiana on the flank, though. This is going to be very, very dangerous. They're all grouped up, but it's the Infernal map. He doesn't have as many walls to work with as usual. Doesn't matter, though. Evo going in, looking for the Jinx. He's going to get put to sleep while he's in his ultimate, so it doesn't really matter. Bad goes into no. Zonia's as Evo picks up a kill on the backside. Meanwhile, General Vici fighting swarms. That's not going to work out very well for you. The Mundo's going to pick up a kill. Bad is dropping low. Flash coming in from the Seraphine. He's going to pick up another one. This is going to be bad. This is going to be almost the entire team of Pawn Sacrifice dropping. And this is going to be barren for the side of Artigops. Oh, there it is. It all falls apart. Conveying finds the angle and the cane. The ELO boost solo Q pick. It's more than that for Evo G. He solos out knee on the back line. The fight is so split. It's just perfect for all of these skirmishy members on the side of Arctic Ops. They take the fight convincingly. They take the Baron and now with an 7.5k gold lead and Soul coming up in three minutes. This game is absolutely theirs to lose. Yeah, call it an Evo boost. We are in unkillable Kane territory at this point in the game. I mean, there's not much you can do against him. You gotta... Like, how do they burst him out before he ults? There's... there's <laughs> he is a nightmare. 
Yeah, he, he is, at this point, it's just so hard to kill him. Three items with the cooldown reduction boots, which are huge for even Red Cane, right? Faster heal in the wall, faster Q up. It's just so nice for him. And Jinx has two items. Yeah, that's great, but you have to get through armor. You have to get through healing. How many members even have healing reduction? It's just the two, and it's not even upgraded. Like, you cannot kill this man. He is too strong. He is too tanky. The only way you could get him is if Bad hits a sleep on him and you burst him out. That is your option. Bad has to hit a massive ulti on the multiple members for them to have any hope of winning a fight. I mean, they can't even kill him here. Yeah, legit sack is on the flank, but I don't think that's going to do much. The stair axe just takes up so much, and they do get him low. Although that's probably Leap. mostly because he didn't have anyone to heal off. Encore going down, or not quite actually yet. But Bad is running into this Mundo, and he's not able to burst him down. This Dang. Mundo going where he pleases. The Encore brings him in. Huge supreme display of talent from the Kiana on the backside. It, that is going to be a three for nothing here for the side of Arctic Ops. And they are just going to march down this bot lane. Oh, yeah. I mean, any kills right now in the game could just be over. Evo can just tank this so easily. Conveying's just going in, skill checking. Oh, yeah. This reminds me a little bit of the Akshan last game, but it does not matter. They do pick up the kill on the set there, as this is almost definitely going to be the inhib, if not the game. I think it's just the game. They can just tank this turret forever with these two frontline. Look at the shields that are popping out. Like, how, how are you going to burst through this? There's no wave clear. And seconds on Jinx. Gonna die. Ivo's going to drop. The Mundo can't be CC'd. That's going to be one Nexus Tower dropping. Jinx is stuck in the fountain. That's going to be number two. Pawn Sacrifice looking to take this game. Down goes the second Nexus Tower. Bad flashing in, looking for more, but it's not going to matter. That's going to be the 2-0 for Arctic Ops. They're moving on. Arctic Ops make it look honestly fairly easy in this series even as the five seed manny coming into the day both these teams were three and two in the regular season but arctic ops just showing that maybe they weren't showing their full hand in the regular season they came in with an extra gear they had it all planned out and even in the moments in these two games in which psw found leads were able to find big plays and skirmish wins it just kind of felt like they could never really wrest control away from Arctic Ops. It felt like it was always in the hands of these players, of conveying, uh, and Evo G in particular in that mid-jungle that we said was so important at the start of the day. And with that Arctic Ops, they'll be moving on, and I think they'll be very happy about their performance. Yeah, and it, it just goes back to, you know, those those small differences in those skirmishes. And, and Arctic Ops, more often than not, they're able to find the hands, find the mechanics to come out on top there. And honestly, though, it deserves a lot more credit than that. Because, yeah, the first game was, like, kind of crazy. They were going back and forth. But in the second game, they picked a really weird, really unique comp. And they came out on top. They executed it to perfection. And they were able to win pretty easily, all things considered. Yeah, I, I think this should make teams very afraid of Arctic Ops, right? If they can draft Q composition like this and make it work in a solo QS fashion, 9-1-9 and nine on the Kane, 10-6-3 and three on the Kiana, it's everyone's worst nightmare. And Swarms was unkillable in the top lane on that Mundo at 4-1-10. and 10. So two very different flavors of drafts from Arctic Ops, two very controlled games i would say yes they were super aggressive yes they made mistakes yes they got punished multiple times at certain points but again it just never felt like it was out of control they always felt like they knew what they needed to do they knew how to overturn the deficits they knew how to play out the game and this is a scary team moving into the second round of winners yeah absolutely i would not want to be playing against them though but also Worth pointing out, Pond Sacrifice, their season's not over yet. They do still have the chance of a lower bracket run. And credit where credit is due as well. I don't think that the scoreline really reflects how close these two games were today. Like, they, as far as 2-0 series go, this was fairly close. Both games were back and forth to an extent. And, you know, Pond Sacrifice, losing to a comp like this, maybe not great for the mental, but at the very least, they were in both of these games. They had chances to win them. Yes, they certainly did. In game one, they even had the lead, right? We talked about not being able to stretch that lead. So there are definitely positives to take away from this series from Pawn. They're going to need to come together and figure out sort of how Arctic Ops did to them today, right? How do we take those moments when we are in the lead, when we have control, and extend it? How do we punish? How do we make the most gold, pressure, whatever, 
of the situation that we are in because those moments that Arctic Ops took, it just felt like Pawn didn't quite have the answers, but they showed that they certainly can get to that point. Now they just have to come up with those answers. Yep. And as far as Arctic Ops goes, is there anything that you think they need to tighten up moving up to the next round of winners? I mean, you could be a little cleaner, but I get the feeling that these players are having a little bit of fun today, Manny. Like if, oh, if yeah, you're in a maybe. tight series and you, you feel like it, right? I, I feel like they could just kind of turn on the afterburner. So I, I think Pawn, or I, I think Arctic come away with pretty much everything they wanted. Didn't have to show their full hand, played two vastly different compositions and felt like they had still a, a higher place to go with their execution and uh, maybe a, a little bit of their over-aggression is just toned back a bit. Yep. Well, that was a great series all around. You know, both games really delivered. Arctic Ops, they're going to be moving on to the next round. You know, um, and meanwhile, Pond Sacrifice, they're going to be tested in the lower bracket going forward. But that is going to do it for us here tonight. I'm Manny. Alongside me is has been DJ. It's been a really fun day. And this has been Risen Divine League. We're going to see you back next week for the next round of playoffs. So uh, have a nice night, everybody.